Honorable Court is now adjourned until Thursday, the 10th day of December at 12 o'clock. Good afternoon. The front two and the spare are all right, but the left rear one is causing me great anxiety. Switched mine. If I don't get another year out of them, I shall be very disappointed. You know, that grandson of mine is the most unusual infant. At five weeks, he holds up his head without support. Here, I'll show you a snapshot. Goodbye, Grant. Have a good vacation. Happy holiday, Josephus. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Justice? Well, uh, could we have a word with you, Justice Grant? Just a few questions. I stopped answering questions when court recessed about three minutes ago. What do you know about Come in, come in. Here we go. Well, gentlemen, Justice Grant, we understand you declined to preside at the Danville investigation. There's some speculation as to your reasons. Well, there needn't be. I've had a long, hard year. I'm tired. I'm going hunting. Miss Gilbert, would you put this in my bag, please? Well, the Gazette referred to you last week as a terrible-tempered Justice Grant. How do you feel about that? I'm flattered. <laughs> and uh, this, too, Miss Gilbert. Uh, where are you going for your hunting? Well, there are plenty of ducks and no reporters. Oh. <laughs> when are you leaving? A moment after you do. Good day, sir. Miss mm. Gilbert, what is this nonsense? What does this resignation mean? I think it's obvious, sir. If it were obvious, I wouldn't ask the question, would I? Justice Grant, I've been with you for two years. And not once during that time do you express satisfaction with my work. Miss Gilbert, you can learn more law here in a week than you can anywhere else in a year. That's all that should interest you. I don't feel that I have to constantly remind you that you're a brilliant young woman and that you have a fine future. Now, if there isn't anything else, can I go? Oh, uh, you wanted to look over the Hale and Tryon opinion, sir. They won't be back from the printer till next week. Oh, yes, they'll need some revision. <laughs> But I don't want to hang around here. Perhaps I can bring them up to you at Crownport, sir. That'd be fine. No, no, no. You need a vacation, too, from me. I don't mind at all. Miss Gilbert, are you heaping coals of fire on my head? I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Oh, I'll wire you before I come. Thank you. And right, Miss Gilbert. Yes, sir. No one must know where I'm going. No one. I want to get away from courtrooms, investigations, lawyers, black robes, everything. Everything but ducks. Hundreds and hundreds of beautiful ducks. <laughs> Hey, you! Wait a minute. I'm Orrin Todd, game inspector. Let's see your license. Yeah, just like I thought. Stranger in town, ain't you? This license ain't legal. Well, I just bought it yesterday at the state capitol. Yeah, I know, mister, but this is Crownport, and you got to have a Crownport stamp on there. Well, I didn't know that. I'll get one tomorrow. Yeah, but it ain't going to do you any good today. You know, I, I could haul you into court and let the judge slap a fine on you. But to save wear and tear on my tires, suppose I sell you one right here. It only cost you five bucks. You know, the five bucks is just for the stamp. I usually get a little something for my trouble, too. Well, you don't understand. I'm giving you a break, brother. Yeah, I never pay off twice, brother. Come on. Well, well look, let me explain it to you. Your Honor, 
Sir, it's not as though my client were trying to evade his financial obligations. Tom Cooney has been a member of this community for many years. And in all that time, his honesty and his responsibility has never been questioned. Now, he intends to make good the payments on these plows, but he's been sick, unable to work. Now, if the court could just grant him an extension... The law doesn't recognize good intentions. I shouldn't have to remind you of that, Mr. Adams. You're supposed to be a lawyer. But, Your Honor, am I not... Am I not justified in asking the court's indulgence in this case? If you take Tom Cooney's farm tools away from him, you take away his only means of earning a living. Mr. Adams, this is a court of law, not an employment agency. Tom Cooney signed an agreement with Vincent Blackston of the Crown Port Auto and Supply Company. This agreement stated if he missed a payment on those plows, Mr. Blackston could take them back. Is that right, Mr. Cooney? Well, uh, yes, Your Honor, but... All right, Counselor. <clears throat> Judgment against Thomas Cooney. But it, it was just one payment. If, if you'd give me a chance to... I don't care whether you say it's fair or not. It ain't. Get him out of here. Come on, Tom. This isn't gonna help. I know it ain't gonna help. Nothing's gonna help in a town like this. Officer. Oh, Come on. Let's go on me. Come on. Looks like you just lost yourself another vote, fella. Come on. Go. It ain't right. I know it ain't right. Crown Port versus Joe Grant. Step up, Joe Grant. Name? Joe Grant. Mm, shooting ducks without a Crown Port permit. I didn't get a chance to shoot. You were going to. Of course I was, you fool. That's why I bought a state license. We also require a Crown Port license, Mr. Grant. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. Hundred dollars or thirty days. Which one of you gentlemen do I pay? The clerk. Should have bought it for me in the first place. Save yourself a lot of dough. I assume that this hundred dollars will permit me to resume my hunting without further interference. Your assumption is wrong. You still need a Crown Port stamp. And an officer enforcing the law is not interfering, Mr. Grant. As a judge, I advise you to be careful of your words. Next case. Crown Port versus Burton Lyon. Step up, Burton Lyon. Hi, Tom. I'm sorry it turned out that way. Guess that's the only way it could have turned out. No, I thought we had a chance, but I guess I should have known. What are you gonna do now? Farm's no good to me without the tools to work it. Guess I'll lose it. The bank will start yelling for its money pretty soon. You know, Bill, Sometimes it's just more than a man can stand. I got to think of something to do. If I could only... Yeah, I know, Tom, I know. Look, why don't you come by the office later on? We'll talk about it, huh? Tom Cooney lost his case. Yeah. He'll probably lose his farm now, too. It's a shame. You know, Homer, that's what I like about the fellows around your shop. They enjoy the good things of life. Like a guy who can't meet his mortgage or a poor farmer getting ripped out of his plows. Maybe a Cooney had a real sharp lawyer. Maybe if we had a bank that'd stand an honest man credit or a judge that'd give him a break. Talk like that isn't going to get you any votes, Adams. If I could afford a 50 cent cigar, I could get yours. The shave. Sure, mister. Stranger in town? Yeah. Can't mean to stay long? Long enough to get a shave. <laughs> Great little town, isn't it, old timer? Yeah. yeah, Judge Hartley really gave you a welcome, didn't he? And our constable, Oren Todds, that's, uh, that's Homer's cousin. Uh, he's all law and order. Regular minute man, isn't he, Homer? Uh, how many minutes did it take before he tried to shake you down? It's a shame. Ever notice how a fellow who can't make a living in a town always tries to run it down? Hmm. You know, Mr. Uh, Grant, isn't it? 
Yeah. Uh, Mr. Grant, it might be fun to bust up one of the constable's little rackets. How about being a guinea pig? Let me turn this into a test case. Mr. Lane, a case this analyst chaser wouldn't take. There was two bucks to vote in it for him. How's it, boys? How's it, Mr. Mr. Mayor? Uh, much of a wait, Homer? Wait in a minute, Mr. Mayor. Hello there, my worthy opponent. I'm sorry about Tom Cooney. I hope he doesn't go to pieces over this. Well, he's really got something to go to pieces over. You know, it's a funny thing about some fellas. No matter where you put them, everything goes wrong for them. Hiya, Tom. You looking for me? I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. I... Uh, Look, Tom, Mr. Mayor, I... If there's anything I can do for you, if you're in need of a little ready cash or something... I don't want charity. I, I, I just can't want... change the law, Tom. You're the mayor. You... But I'm not a nursemaid to every man in town who can't take care of himself. Well, all right, Coney, that's enough. Now beat it. Keep your hands off. Let him alone, Blackson. Oh. No, no. This is all my fault. I wish you hadn't had to do that, Benny. Ah, he's had it coming to him for a long time. That boy is turning into an awful radical. You could tell that by the speech he made, except in the nomination. Well, that kind of talk is never going to make a mayor a crown for it. Well, it's too bad. Nothing I'd like better than to see some bright young fella come along who could take my place. But Bill Adams... Take a man to fill your shoes, Mr. Mayor. Ned Darrow dropped in this morning. He said to give you his regards. What's my bill? Just a shave? Yeah. Fifty cents. Hey, mister, I said fifty cents, not a quarter. Guess you made a mistake, friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made the mistake. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong customer that time, Homer. <laughs> First fellow in ten years ever flipped a bash on me. Columbia, a square rig four master. Nice work. Mm. Oh, and here's a nice one. This is a barkentine. Former square rig, the other mast fore and aft rig. Rather unusual. For sale? Oh, no, no, no. No, they're not that good. It's only a hobby, just, just for fun. I see you're running for mayor. Uh, yeah. Sort of a hobby, too, just for fun? No, not quite. Uh, Mayor Coniston, you saw him in the barber shop. Oh, he and his boys have been running this town for a long time. Make it pretty tough for anybody who comes up against them. Yes, I gathered as much. Well, a lot of people have been getting tired of it. I haven't much time myself. The army's going to grab me in a couple of months, but I thought I might at least get the ball rolling and for once give him a fight. But not too much of a fight. Something you want to see me about, Mr. Grant? In the barbershop, Mr. Adams, you mentioned the fact that you might like to make a test case of my fine. Were you serious? Yes. Yes, I think you've got a case. You do? How would you go about it? Well, we'd... Uh... Of course, the law requires a stamp. I didn't have one. No, no, but I think I could work out an appeal. An appeal? On what grounds? Was the fine illegal? Oh, no, no. They had a right to fine you. The fact that I was unfamiliar with the law? Oh, no, that's no excuse, obviously. Obviously. Then what would you base your appeal on, Mr. Adams? The fact that it's Tuesday and the sun is shining? Look, I haven't had much time to give it thought, but I can figure out an angle. There must be one lying around somewhere. Oh, yes, I'm sure there is. 
In the meanwhile, you can always make a living as a carpenter. Hiya, Bill. Oh, you're busy? No, Charlie, come on in. Mr. Grant, Charlie Craig, my campaign manager. How do you do, sir? Hi. Any new votes, Charlie? About enough to fill a dog's ear. Say, I just heard about Tom Cooney. Yeah, he's taking it pretty hard. I signed the same kind of note he did, so it don't look so good for that tractor of mine either. You couldn't get me a couple of weeks postponement, could you? Well, I'll try, Charlie, but there's no use appealing to Blackston, not with the way he's got his business set up. His hopping on my tail wouldn't burn me if I hadn't had so much trouble with that tractor. Every time I needed a spare part, I had to send for it myself. Blackston never carried them in stock. Did, uh, did Blackston promise you such service? Well, no, there's nothing in the contract about providing service. Has Blackston lived up to all his legal obligations as a seller of the tractor? Well, sir, you, you sound like a lawyer yourself, Mr. Grant. <laughs> yes, well, I was about 20 years ago. Well, maybe you could give Bill here a pointer or two. Anyway, I'm glad to have met you. Be seeing you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going out and see if I can't agitate a few votes for you. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Grant, since you have some knowledge of the law, you've probably decided there's nothing much I can do for you. Well, uh, what about Craig? What are you going to do about him? What can I do for him? With Hartley on the bench, you saw what happened to Tom Cooney. You can't blame that on Judge Hartley. You went into that courtroom without a defense. That's why you got whipped. Well, then I guess I'll get whipped again. I guess you will. You're not much of a fighter, are you, Mr. Adams? Except in barbershop brawls. Oh, stop it. You can't fight brass knuckles with spitballs. The trick in this town is either to play the game their way, and I haven't the stomach for that, or to be as smart as they are. The trick, Mr. Adams, is to be smarter. Well, does that wind up your business? Or are you going to stay and give me the first five lessons on how to win friends and influence judges? No, Mr. Adams, I'm not. Those lessons have been written, and very well written, in books like this and all the others. And somewhere in one of them, there's a lesson mentioning that in any transaction between a seller and a buyer, there are laws governing the behavior of both parties. But I doubt if you can keep afloat long enough to find it. You know, Mr. Adams, I've seen you in action now as a lawyer, as a candidate for mayor, and as a shipbuilder. And if you'll take my advice, you'll stick to shipbuilding. There's a great future in it for lawyers. like this, but I think I found it. Yes, yes, that covers it. You said you hadn't practiced law for 20 years. Imagine remembering a thing like that. <laughs> have, uh, have you had dinner, Mr. Adams? Uh, no, thanks, not hungry. I, I think this will cover it. it. It should work, but I've been battered down by those guys so often, I guess I haven't too much confidence. How long have you lived in Crown Point, Mr. Adams? Uh, 28 years with time off for college and law school. Mm -hmm. Never established residence in any other state? No. You're sure of that? Well, of course. Well, we, we went to Mexico for a few months when I was seven, but... Did you file an income tax return for 1939 and 40? Well, sure. I didn't pay anything in 1940. I didn't earn enough, but I, I filed a return. And your figures were honest, correct, and would bear investigation. What? Why, of course they were. No, you're getting nervous, Mr. Adams. I'm not nervous. I'm merely oh, yes, trying... Yes, yes, you are. You're flustered. You're raising your voice. Well, why shouldn't I raise my voice? You've as good as accused me of falsifying my income tax. I've accused you of nothing, Mr. Adams. Now, look, I don't know what you have on there, but I want to yes, tell you... Th take a look. It's, uh, it's, it's an old trick that Justice Brandeis used to play. I, uh, I read about it in Colliers once. You see, it's an unfortunate fact, Mr. Adams, that every man, even you and I, has done something that he doesn't want anybody to know about. Now, if you can make him think that you're holding in your hand the skeleton in his closet... You've got him. Well, let's say at least you've got him squirming, nervous, worried, as you were. But if that man happens to have a really guilty conscience... Your full name is...
is Vincent Z. Blackston? Yeah. Tell me, Mr. Blackston, what does the Z stand for? Do I have to answer that, Your Honor? What can be your objection? Surely you have nothing to hide. Well, the Z... Well, the Z stands for Zephyr. It's a family name. Zephyr? Uh, means a little wind, I believe. Quiet. <laughs> Mr. Blackson, you're the owner and manager of the Crownport Auto and Supply Company? Yes. The, uh, the sole owner? Uh, why, sure, of course. No silent partners? No. Well, of course, there are people. Oh, then you're not the sole owner. I didn't say that. I just it said... It's very strange to me, Mr. Blackson. You don't know whether you own your own business or not. I object. That question is irrelevant, immaterial, and calculated to confuse the witness. Objection sustained. Counselor will restrict himself to the facts bearing on this case. Hey, Mr. Blackston, your company sells most of the used cars and tractors in this town. Almost a monopoly, isn't it? I do the most business because I sell my stock at the lowest prices. That's not monopoly. That's... That's the American way of life. Now tell me, Mr. Blackston. Carry spare parts for your customers? Sure. Hmm. Do you have in stock at this moment piston rings for the 1938 tractors you sold in this town? Mm. Well, Mr. Blackston? Well, no, I don't. Oh, then you don't carry all the spare parts your customers might need. Well, I can always get them if they need them. Yes, but sometimes your customers have to wait. Sure, it takes two weeks. If I ain't got them, how can they have them? An intelligent answer, Mr. Blackston, and an honest one. One which will require the court to enter judgment against you in this case. Will Counselor explain that statement? Certainly, Your Honor. Motor Vehicle Laws, 1919, Chapter 174, Section 52. The sale of any automobile or any other automotive vehicle is void unless the dealer carries in stock at all times and on demand parts that may be needed to repair the particular make of vehicle. Will you let me see that reference? <sighs> Counselor would seem to be correct. You put it over, Bill. Say, this will take care of Tom Cooney, too. You're telling me. I, I thought you were going hunting. Well, all the ducks are inside today. I see you winged a couple yourself. Oh, of course, it's nothing really big. Oh, who am I kidding? I, I'm so tickled I feel like a combination of Superman and a, a member of the Supreme Court. Mm. Really, I, I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Grant. Oh, no need to, my boy. First time I've enjoyed a courtroom in hey, years. Hey, thank you, fella. <laughs> You know what this stuff is? No, Mr. Grant, he wouldn't. William, this is American money. Good old folding money. You know what you can do with this stuff? You can buy things that you need. You get it? Yeah, but what I don't get is where you got it. Well, seeing Blackson get trim, warm some hearts, and unloosen a couple of purse strings. The boys have kicked in for your campaign fund. You know what we're going to do with this beautiful stuff? We're going to get some posters printed. Great big ones. The kind that look you right straight in the eye and follow you around. <laughs> Why get frightened? So Adams does win one rotten little case. Do you know what that case cost me? You can afford it. If it had happened to your hotel, Roscoe, you'd scream like a stuck pig. Stop it, stop it. Seriously, Jim, you don't see Adams as real competition. Well, as things stand now, no. But if a lot of people start thinking of Bill Adams as the people's champion, well... Jim, there was nothing else I could do. I can give you boys the edge when it's a question of interpretation, but not when the law's right there in black and white. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Judge. It's just something to start thinking about, that's all. You think we'll have trouble? 
Well, now look, boys. On second thought, we may be getting all steamed up for nothing. Yeah. But suppose he opens a lot of old cases, like Tom Cooney's. I think you've got something there, Zeppa. We'll just have to show the boy that he's wrong. should try to scoop some of that up. Uh, no, I guess not, huh? Well, uh, everything seems to be under control, but... Would it be all right with you if we went to your car now? The car? Oh, no. No, yes. Right here. Sorry to get off to such a bad start. I'm not always so clumsy. Oh, my hat! Oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. this morning do some hunting. He ought to be back soon. I was going to drive you around the town, but uh, I guess you'll want to get cleaned up now. Yes, I think I will. Well, I'll take you straight to the hotel. You are running for mayor? Mm-hmm. Surprised? That's putting it very mildly, Mr. Adams. Well, make the most of it, lady, because that's likely to be the only surprise you'll get in this town. Who's the girl with Adams? Don't know. What difference does it make? I'd like a room, please, by the day. No baggage? Well, she's just here. I don't register women without baggage in my hotel. Henry, 
Show this lady out. But you don't understand. Yes, I do. Why, you... Uh, please, Mr. Adams, let me explain. I, I Come on, sister, beat it. Take your hands off her. Oh, yeah? in the face, mister. Oh, but officer. Hey, officer! Hey, sergeant! Sergeant, I want to use that phone! Will you please keep quiet, your honor? They're just trying to get us out of here, you know. Why didn't you think of that before you got us in? Look, I'm very sorry this happened, but it isn't my fault. I suppose I started the fight. Mm. You sure did all right once it got going. Oh, ho, ho, ho. what a gal. And what a wallop. Yeah, Miss G, you're really some scrapper. Say, hey, Roscoe Swade asked me to call you, Judge. We've got Bill Adams in here with a dame, assault and battery. How long do you want us to hold him here? Oh, just let them stew for a while, Sergeant. Uh, Adams will probably want to get in touch with me. Uh, oh. oh, he does, huh? Well, I'm out of town. You can't reach me anywhere. That's right. Overnight. Will you have the chef prepare a couple of these for tomorrow night's dinner? And I'll have my key, please. Yes, sir. What, uh, what room did you put Miss Gilbert in? Gilbert? Gilbert. There's no Miss Gilbert registered. Well, that's... Strange. Anything uh, wrong, Mr. Grant? Why, yes, I was expecting my secretary today. Mr. Adams was to have met her. Your, your secretary? Yes, yeah. Miss, uh, Miss Gilbert, Miss Lucy Gilbert. Have you heard from her? Oh, no, no, not exactly. Well, that is, uh, she was here, but... Where is she? Uh, well, Mr. Grant, you see, we, uh, we had a little trouble. And... Where is she? She's with Adams, in the county jail. Well, you get them out of there, and fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, right away. Bertie, get me Judge Hartley, quick. Yes, sir. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Grant. Well, good evening, Miss Gilbert. I'm sorry I couldn't meet you at the station. So am I, sir. However, Mr. Adams seems to have made your introduction to Crown Point quite spectacular. Well, if it amuses you both, of course, it was quite worthwhile. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sit down, Miss Gilbert. You, uh, you seem tired. What, what happened? Well, when I said the boys were, were playing with brass knuckles, I wasn't kidding. Look, I win a case from Blackston. That makes a good impression around town. So I walk into Swade's hotel. Roscoe says something, provokes a fight, and I land in jail. That's the way Crown Ports run, Mr. Grant. I hope the fact that Miss Gilbert was involved won't upset you. The fact that Miss Gilbert was involved upsets me a great deal. It strikes me that Swade, Connison, and company are just been a little too high-handed. Well, you can't fight the city hall, sir. As candidate for mayor, that's what you're doing, isn't it? Well, I suppose I am, but the boys are starting to play rough. Well, of course, if they play too rough, you can always go back to your shipbuilding. Yes, I guess I could. But right now, I'm going to go home and get some sleep. Miss Gilbert and I have a date in court tomorrow. Uh, good night, Miss Gilbert. Don't hold me against Crown Port. All right, sir. Your, your notes, perhaps you'd like to go over them. I gather somehow that you're not very much drawn to Mr. Adams. My personal reactions to him aren't important, sir. Well, I wouldn't be too hasty. He attracts too much trouble. He certainly does. His whole approach is wrong. He shuts his eyes and wades in and slugs. But he has good stuff. Do you think it wise to get involved with his problems? 
After all, you are on your vacation. Oh, I'm not involved. I'm just trying to give the boy a push. Come in. May I turn your bed down, sir? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Good night, Mr. Grant. Good night. Oh? Oh, I'm all right. Good night, Miss Gilbert. <laughs> kind of skimpy, isn't it? They just ain't long enough, none of them. I keep a-telling, Mr. Swade. <laughs> well, there, that'll have to do. Good night, sir. Hope you rest well. Thank you. Get into your clothes, get two yardsticks. Yardsticks. Come right over here and register for the night at the hotel. I'll tell you all about it when you get here, but get here. Right. Hello, Roscoe. Give me a single room next to Mr. Grant's. I'll, uh, I'll pay in advance. Thirteen. What's the matter, Roscoe? You don't seem at all happy to see me. I, uh, brought my luggage, too. Why should he sleep here with yardsticks? He's got a place of his own. Hello. Get me Miss Gilbert's room, please. Where do we start? Why should he want to talk to her in the middle of the night? I don't know, but... It's Grant. Yes, Mr. Grant. Yes, sir. Right away. He wants a bellboy right away. He wants to send something to Miss Gilbert's room. They're up to something. I know they are. Henry. Take this yardstick to Miss Gilbert. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Swade said with his compliments. My compliments to Mr. Swade, I don't eat fruit. with his compliments. My compliments to Mr. Sway. Tell him I've lost my appetite. I couldn't see nothing. They blacked out the rooms. Number three. Now she's calling Grant.
Grant's hotel? Give me Mr. Grant's room. Mr. Grant, you were absolutely right. It's nine and two. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, uh, I, I think Mr. Swade's going to be a little sorry tomorrow that he's bringing those charges against us. Good afternoon, Miss Gilbert. Mr. Grant, you're looking very beautiful, Miss Gilbert. Really? I didn't sleep at all. Probably nervous exhaustion due to the unfortunate experience you underwent yesterday. Ever spent any time in jail, Mr. Swade? Ever been sued for false arrest, Mr. Swade? Miss Gilbert, I made up my mind to drop the complaint against you. Well, what about the complaint against Mr. Adams? He spent a few hours in jail, too. You've got nobody but yourself to thank. You started it hitting Henry. I'll forget you hit me. He didn't hit you. I did. Well, I'll forget that too, but... But six hours in jail is something I won't forget, Mr. Swade. I think $5,000 damages would be about right, Counselor, don't you? Well, I had thought of 10, but... Uh... No, I think five is enough. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Swade. I'll see that the money goes to a good cause. I'll invest it in war bonds. Court is now in session. Judge Hartley presiding. Case of Swade versus Gilbert and Adams. Judge, I move you throw my complaint out. The complaint against Miss Gilbert? Yes. Adams, too. We settled it by ourselves. Both of them, huh? Yeah. Wow. Case of Swade versus Gilbert and Adams, dismissed. You can thank Miss Gilbert for getting you off so easy. Thank you, Lucy. Oh, uh, Roscoe. Uh, just a minute, Roscoe. We're not quite through yet. Uh, Joe, serve the papers on Mr. Swade. Roscoe Swade? What are you talking about? I took it if I dropped my suit against you, you'd drop yours against me. Relax, Roscoe. This is another suit. Your Honor? I find that in the management of his hotel, Mr. Swade is in violation of several important laws. Oh, what are the charges? I brought the evidence with me, Your Honor. The hotel laws of this state, 1909, section 52. All sheets provided in all hotels, hostelries, inns, or lodging houses shall be a minimum of nine feet in length. Seven and a half feet, Your Honor. All pillowcases shall be a minimum of three feet. Two and a half feet, Your Honor. There should be a minimum distance between all twin beds of two feet. Now, the beds in my room at the Suede Hotel were scarcely half a foot apart, Your Honor. I uh, couldn't bring them in evidence, but I have witnesses who can testify as to my veracity. Mm. Let me see this reference, sir. You'll be sorry for this. You wait and see. Will the court warn the defendant that threats and intimidation are punishable by law? Be quiet, Mr. Swade. And don't you tell me how to run my court. The law provides a fine of $50. Uh, for each offense. Are you prepared to face these charges at the present time? Yes. Do you plead guilty? Yes. <clears throat> and pay the clerk. <clears throat> Nice work, Counselor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Half hour recess. chance to be a little gift from Mr. Swade. <laughs> I thought we might end our celebration in style. <laughs> what, uh, what vintage is that, miss? California, 1938. Here, I'll do it, miss.
tell I'm an amateur, the bottle resents me. <laughs> well, it's hot anyway. <laughs> you To the next pair of crown ports. Yes, who's learned to use his head and his law books. Mm. Well, to my rooting section. <laughs> I think you're on the right track, Counselor. You keep the Connorsons busy on the little things and they won't have time for the bigger ones. <laughs> Neither will I. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think I'd like to do a little hunting in the morning if you can keep your life fairly quiet for one day. Well, I'll try. Uh, Lucy might keep an eye on me. That'd help. I'll be responsible for him, sir. Starting with breakfast. Well, I, uh, I think Lucy would probably like some more coffee. Uh, yes, I would. Uh, it'll just keep you awake. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, sir. More coffee? Uh... I suppose you're a wonderful dancer. Fair. I'm awful. Good. That'll make me feel superior. May I have this dance, Miss Adams? Charmed. Hey, I'm not so bad, am I? You're fine. I guess the trouble was I just never liked to dance before. Neither did I. You know, Lucy, Crownport's not such a bad little town. It, it's got a lot of nice people in it. You've just seen the worst side of it. Like you? Uh, no, but what I mean, Lucy, is... Well, can you see yourself living in a town like Crownport? No, pretty dull, I guess. Huh? Very. Practically nothing's happened to me since I met you. Yeah. No, but seriously, sometimes I have whole days of peace and quiet. Now, we've been together for several hours, and nothing very spectacular has happened. Not near enough has happened. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Sorry. Sometimes we have whole days of peace and quiet. Uh. Good night, Mr. Adams. Oh, that, that date for breakfast still stands. Good night, Bill. Good morning, Herman. Well, goodbye, Mr. Adams. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mr. Grant said you were to look after me today. And what he says goes. He's your boss, you know. But well, I've had breakfast with you. Oh, yes, but I need much more looking after the man. Much more. What the? Wait, Bill. Hey, I've been trying to find you. Look. Hey, what's going on here? What do you think you're doing? You're being evicted. Here's your notice. Come on, boys. Don't take all day. Okay, folks. Because of the lumber I keep around, the place has attracted termites. How do you like that? It's fantastic. Look. Look, can't you just wait until I call Ridges and get this thing fixed up? Sure. You can call him in Swade's office, but it won't do you no good, pal. He signed the notice himself. Okay, fellas, lift it. Yeah, but... But at least you can leave my stuff here until I can get another office. Sorry. Orders. Well, what difference does it make to you? <laughs> oh, boy. Where's your telephone? I over there. Thanks. Listen, will you stop reading me the Constitution? I'm just following orders. All I'm asking you to do it. Hello? Hello, is this the Andrews building? Give me the superintendent, please. Miss Gilbert! Miss Gilbert! I've been looking for you, Mr. Grant. They're evicting Bill. Evicting Bill? Why, what happened? Something about termites. Uh, yeah, just uh, drop my things at the hotel, will you? Now, tell me. Who's responsible for this? Seems that Roscoe Swade has a pal named Hart Ridges. Happens to be my landlord, also happens to be one of Connison's boys. Oh, so Roscoe gives Hart a call, and here I am. 
Uh, don't worry, though. I'll get another office. Hello. Hello. This is William Adams. Yes, I, I want to rent an office. What? Oh, no vacancies. Can't we do something, Mr. Grant? Well, I don't know. We... Wait a minute. Be careful of those. <laughs> Vacancies at all, huh? I see. Not an office in town, not even a loft. Oh, those boys think of everything. Connison? Are you sure? Who else? It's too clever for anybody else. Let me see. Who's Bill Adams? Do you mean Mayor Adams? <laughs> I'm Bill Adams. What do you want? Electric company. Got orders to discontinue service. Efficient, aren't they? You'll find the box in the back. Okay, thanks. What's the matter, Mr. Mayor? Can't you pay your bills? <laughs> you shut your mouth. I'll shut it for you. Oh, no, no, Tom, no. That's what they want us to do, so let's not do it. Why, uh, why not use my sitting room as temporary headquarters? Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you, Mr. Grant, but I couldn't do uh, Why not, Bill? You're not going to let them put you out of business, are you? Where's Bill Adams? Oh, Mr. Mayor, you got more company. Hey, <laughs> Willie, bring out a couple of more chairs. <laughs> Hi, Adams, what do you want? Compliments of the mayor. He thought you might need some help. Well, you send my compliments right back to the mayor and tell him to... You tell Mayor Connison I'm staying right where I am, out on the street. And before I'm through, I'll have him out here with me. Ah, uh, get a soapbox. You bet I'll get a soapbox. <laughs> and if Connison wants to know what I mean, tell him to come down here and I'll try explaining it to him personally. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a few minutes until I get my new office set up. Will you? You mean right here on the street? Sure, why not? We'll hang my shingle on that lamppost. Bill, they'll get out the junction. You won't be here two hours. I know that, sir. But this time, Connison's gone too far. He's giving me more publicity than I ever dreamed of. I may be here only an hour, but it'll be a good one. I'll get you an office. Now, keep out of trouble. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, now, is this about right for the desk? Oh, no, I think it should be catty corner. Okay, let me go. Oh, oh, here, let me take those. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Can we see him now? I think so. You fellas wait. We'll be right out. That'll do it, Mr. Grant. Oh, thank you. Well, where's Mr. Adams? How you feel, Mr. Maybe Grant? Maybe you better take it easy for a no, while. No, 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 no. I'm all right. Where are Mr. Adams and my secretary? Well, he's in jail, and she's trying to get him out. Uh, oh, Lucy. Did the doctor say he could get out? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Where's Bill? Still in jail. I've tried everything. They're holding him for a $15,000 bail, inciting to riot. This is outrageous. We'll have to find Judge Hockley. We've tried to. And he couldn't be found, as usual. You can find him at Connison's rally, about an hour from now, up there on the platform, shooting his big mouth off. No, we'll find him before then. It's no use, Mr. Grant. They got us all sewed up. They always do. Yes, but they took one stitch too many this time. They always do that, too. Come on. Do you think you should? I've got to get the boy out of jail. I'm glad you feel that way, sir. Yes, well, let's not keep Judge Hockley waiting, huh? <laughs> I want to talk to you, Mr. Hockley. 
Hartley. Sorry, I haven't any time to give you right now. I'm afraid you'll have to find time. See here, you. Judge Hartley, acting on my rights as a citizen, I demand that you swear out warrants for the arrest of Ridges, Swade, Blackston, and Mayor Connison. You're crazy. On what charges? Conspiracy, abuse of public office, inciting to riot. I suggest that you come to the jail with us now and release Mr. Adams and sign those warrants. We'll need a couple of more warrants, too, for some hoodlums. I have their names. You are crazy. You can't push away into my house and order me around. Do you realize I can have you arrested for disturbing the peace, all of you? Yes. Let's just postpone that, Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, will you excuse us for just a minute? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I have persuaded Judge Hockley to change his mind. He has kindly consented to release your candidate in time for the rally tonight. Oh. Oh. Can I tell Bill how you got him out? No, that's not necessary. What's the deal, Mr. Grant? Do you know something about him? No, on the contrary, he knows something about me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, my friend. For a long time, I've been hoping a man would come along, a young man. Because, like I always say, the future of our great country belongs to the young folks who could take over and give us old folks a chance to sit back and take things easy. Well, this year I said to myself, Jim, maybe this Bill Adams is the fella. But he dashed my hopes and prayers to the ground. I saw that he's not the man we've been waiting for. That he's nothing but an agitator, a troublemaker, stirring up neighbors against each other. He said he'd be here tonight. I wish he was. I hoped that when I got up to talk, he'd be here on the platform with me to debate with me the issue so close to our hearts. Bill Adams, if you think you're going to break up this rally, you're crazy. Did you let him out? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, uh... Well, Chief Perkins here, he's, uh, He's got a warrant for your arrest. And for the arrest of Blackston, Ridges, and Swade. Take your hands off me. Jim, I, I couldn't help it. Honestly, you just better come along. Attention, please. Quiet, quiet, everybody. My friend, I never thought he'd dare do this. But you can see for yourselves now to what lengths this radical will go to sabotage a peaceful meeting of the people. But I'm calling his bluff. I'm going to make him bring out the witnesses to prove this. As mayor of this town, I got a right to call a special hearing, and I do. So the issues will be clear when you go to the polls to vote tomorrow. You'll be sorry you ever started this. Better remain with us, Mr. Hartley. We wouldn't want you to prejudice the mayor's testimony. Any place there, folks. All right, find a seat and sit down. Sit down. That Adams bird's just bluffing. He ain't got a thing on the mayor. No. All right, find a seat and sit down. Mr. Grant, I still don't understand. This hearing will come to order. Judge Hartley, my friend, I'm not on trial here. Bill Adams has made accusations against me. He's had a warrant sworn out for my arrest. This is a hearing to show you that he has no proof of anything he says. That he's trying by a cheap trick to win an election he can't win by fair play. Judge Hartley. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you'll have to moderate your tone. Uh, 
This is very irregular. Step one side and clear the aisle, please. Mr. Connison, it's true that you are not formally on trial here. You asked for this hearing. You demanded by what right we had you arrested. We're here to tell you and to accuse you of conspiring against men who honestly oppose you, of inciting a riot with reckless disregard for human safety, of abusing the office to which you have been elected by the people of this town. And these accusations we are prepared to prove. I hate to see the old boy get himself involved like this. Don't worry about the old boy now, darling. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Grant has obtained confessions from these men. They have told Mr. Grant that acting on your orders, they started the riot this morning in order to make possible Mr. Adams' arrest. They have sworn to these facts. Because of this, Mr. Grant was able to demand a warrant for your arrest. Mr. Grant swore out a warrant for my arrest? A man who doesn't even live in our town. A meddling old fool who does nothing but shoot ducks and start trouble. Jim. Don't say that. I'll say anything I please. I demand to know who this man is. Who is this Joe Grant? Jim, do yourself a favor. Don't ask. That's all right, Judge Hockley. Mr. Connison, it's not Joe Grant. It's John Josephus Grant. Where are you from, Grant? Washington, D.C. Jim, please, no more questions. Mr. Grant... Shut up! I'll ask all the questions I please. By what right? And what do you do, Mr. Grant? Mr. Connison, I am a judge, an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. <laughs> Mr. Connison, you have asked by what right I have interfered in this situation. Do you still want an answer? Uh, Justice Grant, uh, would you care to... No, 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 thank you. Bill! Bill! Oh, just throw some water on him, Lucy. He'll be all right. Your Honor, Mayor Connison, it's only right that you should know why I, a stranger, have become involved in your affairs. Believe me, it's not because I am a justice of the Supreme Court. It's because, like all of you here, I am a citizen of this country. That is no little honor. Men have fought revolutions, have died to be called citizen. And as citizens, we carry a burning responsibility. It means that when we elect men to public office, we, we cannot do it as lightly as we flip a coin. It means that after we've elected them, we can't sit back and say, our job is done. What they do now doesn't concern us. That philosophy of indifference is what the enemies of decent government want. If we allow them to have their way to grow strong and vicious, then the heroic struggle which welded thousands of lovely towns like this into a great nation means nothing. Then we are not citizens, we are traitors. The great liberties by which we live have been bought with blood. The kind of government we get is the kind of government we want. Government of the people, by the people, and for the people can mean any kind of government. It's our duty to make it mean only one kind, uncorrupted, free, united. I believe, Mayor Connison, that I've answered your question. <laughs> As soon as court adjourns, I'll meet you back here in my chambers. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Justice? You seem nervous. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, how about you, Mayor Adams? Have you the ring? Uh, well, <laughs> Do you know your lines, sir? Well, I ought to. I stayed up half the night learning them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Grant. Oh, 
I'm glad to see you. Thank you. You're looking fine, Josephus. How was the hunting? Oh, best I ever had. <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor.